Have you ever imagined what hell would look like if it existed in our universe? A world made of nothing but lava and hot smoke that would consume us, flesh and bones in only a matter of seconds. This is the reality of a planet that is in a scorchingly close orbit around its star, Copernicus, which is at a distance of only 40 light years away from Earth. Estimated to have a mass eight times that of Earth's and size twice as big, it is referred to as a hot super-Earth. However, there is nothing Earth-like about this planet. Hello, and welcome to Beyond Unknown. Are you interested to find out more about this hellish world? Then fasten in your seatbelt as we go for a drive around this mysterious hell. But while you're at it, don't forget to press that big thumbs up button and share this video with your fellow astronomy nerds. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin. The Super Earth 55 Cancri E, also named Janssen after the inventor of the optical telescope, is somewhat of a famous exoplanet. Even though it was originally discovered in 2004, it wasn't until nine years later after its discovery in 2016 that its atmosphere was fully understood. The average density of this world is so high that scientists had to conduct multiple studies in an effort to explain what could be causing so. Astronomers have considered the planet to be completely covered with oceans or land made of diamonds. However, none of these have proven to be true, as oceans would perish in the extreme heat of the planet, and a diamond interior is unlikely owing to the host star's composition. According to a more recent work based on data from Spitzer Space Telescope, it was concluded that the surface of the planet was covered in lakes of hot magma. Now the question remains, does this planet host an atmosphere, and if it does, what is it like? A new study made by scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory explains that despite its extreme surface temperature, 55 Cancri E indeed hosts an atmosphere comparable to the one we have on Earth, only much hotter. It was the Astrophysics Journal in which the study, titled A Case for an Atmosphere on Super-Earth Cancri E, made its appearance. This study was conducted by Isabel Angelo, a physics major with UC Berkeley, and Renyu Hu, an astronomer and Hubble Fellow with JPL and Caltech. The two performed an in-depth analysis of the Spitzer data in an effort to determine the presence and composition of an atmosphere surrounding the hot planet. The distance between this super-Earth and its star, a main-sequence K-type orange dwarf, is actually just 1.5% of the distance between Earth and the Sun. In fact, this exoplanet orbits about 26 times closer to its star than Mercury, which is the most sun-kissed planet in our solar system. With this in mind, take a moment to imagine what the surface temperatures would be like. Also a fun fact, this world completes its orbit in the shortest time period of all known exoplanets, just 17 hours and 40 minutes. In other words, a complete year on this exoplanet lasts less than 18 hours. Take a moment to fully grasp what I just said. Given the close proximity of the star-planet duo, the planet is exposed to a tremendous amount of heat and is tidally locked with its sun, meaning that one face of the planet is constantly directed towards the star. Owing to these factors, scientists speculate that the surface of the planet may be entirely made up of lava. In the months of June and July of 2013, Bryce Olivier Demery from the University of Bern, Switzerland, led a team of scientists in taking Spitzer Space Telescope observations of the planet as it circled around its star, viewing not just the planet's movements, but everything in between in order to determine the planet's brightness as it completed its orbit around Copernicus. With the help of the telescope's infrared camera, which acted like night vision goggles, the astronomers were able to see how much heat the planet was emitting and was also successful in obtaining its surface temperature data. Initially, it was believed that the results of the temperature data were an indication of large areas of landmass covered by hot lava. However, this explanation was proven to be doubtful after the data was reanalyzed and combined with other new models developed by Hugh. A better explanation, according to the new findings, would be the presence of a thick cloud of atmosphere over the planet's surface, since lava lakes would create hotspots of high temperatures if exposed to space. According to the Spitzer data, it was also made evident that the hottest spot on the planet is shifted at least 30 degrees from the center of the day-side hemisphere. This means that there is an undiscovered factor because of which the heat is recirculating, at least on the day-side. And if not an atmosphere, then what? The team led by Demery claimed that lava flows carry heat away from the center of the day-side hemisphere, although Demery says, we always felt uncomfortable with this explanation. Another significant piece of evidence to prove the presence of an atmosphere was a minimum temperature difference between the day and night side, which was previously assumed to be greater. After comparing changes in the planet's brightness to energy flow models, the team of scientists came to the conclusion that an atmosphere with volatile materials was the best fitted explanation for the high temperatures. 
In a NASA press statement released some time ago, Renyu Hu explains, If there is lava on this planet, it would need to cover the entire surface, but the lava would be hidden from our view by the thick atmosphere. Scientists have been debating whether this planet has an atmosphere like Earth and Venus or just a rocky core and no atmosphere like Mercury. The case for an atmosphere is now stronger than ever. By using Hughes' newer model of how the heat would flow throughout the planet and radiate back into space, they estimated what the planet's surface temperatures would be. On its colder side, i.e. during nighttime, the planet bakes at a temperature of 1400 K, which is approximately 1120 Celsius or 2060 Fahrenheit. Daytime temperatures are even hotter at 2700 K, which is approximately 2420 Celsius or 4400 Fahrenheit. While these temperatures are extreme in themselves, there's not much of a difference between the day and night temperatures. If the planet had no atmosphere, these deviations in temperature would have been far greater. As far as the composition of the atmosphere is concerned, Angelo and Hugh revealed that it might be similar to the one on Earth, made up of nitrogen, water, and even oxygen. While much hotter, the atmospheric density of the planet also appears to be significantly similar to that of Earth, indicating that the super-Earth is also likely to have a terrestrial or rocky composition. Habitability is out of the question, however, since it's almost impossible to harbor a body of liquid water at such soaring temperatures to maintain life. Angelos Ciaras, lead astronomer from University College London, said in a statement, The observations of 55 Cancri E's atmosphere suggest that the planet has managed to cling on to a significant amount of hydrogen and helium from the nebula from which it originally formed. Jonathan Tennyson, a colleague of Ciaras, also added, it is perhaps not a planet I would like to live on. Well, no kidding. But at the end of the day, regards have to be paid to Hughes' development of a method that made it possible and easier to study the atmospheres and surfaces of the exoplanet. Angelo, who was working on the study and led it as a part of her internship with JPL, adapted Hughes' model to 55 Cancri E. This model was previously used and applied to mass gas giants that orbit in close proximity to their respective stars, aka hot Jupiters. Amazingly, there are more unanswered questions that this study aims to raise and provide answers to. An example of such a question would be how, over all these years, has 55 Cancri E avoided losing its atmosphere to space? Considering how close the planet is in an orbit around its star, coupled with the fact that it's tidally locked, the planet would be subject to immense amounts of radiation. We can hope that further studies will help reveal the reasons to us and consequently aid us in our further understanding of large, hot, rocky planets. The application of this model to 55 Cancri E is the perfect example of how during recent years we're seeing an ever-evolving pace in the research area of exoplanets. Initially, it was only possible for scientists to study gas giants that orbit close to their sun as well as their respective atmosphere because they were the easiest to spot and characterize. But thanks to technological, methodical, and instrumental advancements that have increased the range of planets that we can now study. Well, this wraps up our video for today. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to shoot this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to hear more from us, then press the bell icon button to receive daily notifications of our content. Do you think more of such hot flaming planets exist in our galaxy? And if so, do you believe that they could host an alien creature that can survive under such extremes? Share with us your thoughts in the comment section down below. And until we see you in our next video, take care and goodbye.